Hi, David Weinzard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. Our sole intent at Paratech 10 is to convey usable tech that's useful to both the professionals and amateurs. We're going to have to deal with the exhaust port in a slightly different fashion to what I had hoped. Why? I broke my bandsaw. So, needing to get this video done and out, I carried on without having a cross section of the port. Now, according to Charlie, there are some, uh, how shall I say, um, restrictions on shaping it caused by the proximity of water. What I'm going to do here is to start with a finished port and show you where you have to modify it. You'll understand as soon, for those of you who are going to do this, you'll understand as soon as you get into that port what I'm talking about. And for those who aren't going to do it, you'll learn a few techniques for getting around a point of restriction that is a little inconvenient. So here we go. Here is the finished port. Here is our exhaust port. One of the things you'll instantly appreciate is this big dip just here, right? The reason for that is that just above this point, I just cross here, there is, according to Charlie, there is a water passage along here. Now, I get the impression that it's not on every head, but we don't know that for sure. Now, Charlie has a sonic tester, so he can test this area here. So on our heads, we'll be able to take this down as far as possible. You can see that the port is kind of a funny shape just here. And that initially looks like a problem, but here's what we can do. We can widen the port across from here to here, starting down here at the guide, right? So we make it wider here to compensate for this bump intruding into the port. Now the end of the port, nothing special there. This is one of the square ports. There are ones which are truncated across here. Uh, Charlie will address those. There's a slightly different flow pattern as you may expect, but there's nothing to stop us getting some pretty decent flow out of this. It all depends on this area just here, coming into the seat and the short side turn, right? We must get this amount this first quarter inch of the port such that we are making the most of our area ruling. Like I've said this before many times, the most important part of an exhaust stroke is the blowdown, followed very closely by the extraction effect that can occur during the overlap. Right, both of those will be governed by port speed. One of them supersonic, the other not so. That's the one in the overlap. But we have to take care of it. Now this part here will really come into its own when we put headers on. But to start with, we are going to use the iron manifolds. Right, Charlie's already started uh, uh, looking at those and the flow uh, and um, you might want to check his uh, his uh, videos on that. Anyway, that's what we've got to deal with. We have to consider the valve shape when we're looking at the flow characteristics of the port. It would appear there's a number of possible shapes that come in the uh, stock heads. This type here has a shallow back on it. Whereas this type here 
has that very thick stem. This runs cooler, but this flows a lot better. My advice here is put this type of valve in, try to avoid using this type. So at this point, let's just make a consideration of what these moves that I've so far described produced in the way of flow. Now remember, this is a flow test without the final seat on, right? We're going to get to the final flow figures from Charlie's, which hopefully should be just a little better than our, in quotes, research ports. Now let me just pick up my pad here, and we're going to be lifting the valve about 500. Well, we've gone from 117 CFM all the way to 165 at 500. That's a pretty damn good increase in flow. We're talking about about 45% increase. That's going to make a big difference there. Our next impediment, though, is going to be the exhaust manifold. Well, we'll deal with that in another issue. Now we have the uh, got the data on the head. We've got the intake flow figures, the exhaust flow figures. We have a compression ratio that we're very likely to be able to achieve. And that puts us in a position now to be able to make a cam selection. That's what we'll talk about in the next issue. Meanwhile, let me remind you to please subscribe, like, notify, hit that super chat button, and uh, anything else that helps our subscriber count. Remember, the more subscribers we have, the more likely we are to be able to get some good response from raffling off the parts and finally the engine for St. Jude's. Thank you for watching.